Welcome to Vineyard Community Church. I'm so happy that you're joining us today. My name is Daniel. I'm going to be your service host today. God has an amazing word for us today. Even if it's your first time joining us here at Vineyard, I just want to welcome you. Make sure you're comfortable at home right now. You're on the couch. And right now at this moment, at least turn to somebody if they're next to you to the right or the left and say, hey, you look good this morning even though you're in your pajamas. God is going to be amazing. I'm excited for today. I hope you are. Even though we cannot meet here physically in church, we are still together online. We are the church. And so let's go ahead and begin the rest of this worship experience. Also, I want to let you know that there's still an opportunity for you to tithe either through your text or at Vineyard Church on the, um, online. And so right now, let's pray so we begin the rest of the service. God, I thank you for so much for today that we have an opportunity to still worship you online together. And God, I just pray you meet people where they are, on their couch, on their bed, where they are, God. Just meet them where they are. I ask that you speak a word of life, encouragement, and hope over their family, over their life. Any anxiety and fear, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that you would just continue to do only what you do, even through, during this storm, even during the struggle, even during worry, God. We know that you are a rock. You are our foundation. In Jesus' name, everybody said, come on, somebody, amen. And let's enjoy the rest of this service. Greeting. It's so good to be with you guys today. You know, before Pastor Andy comes on with the message that God put on his heart, I want to talk to you just, to, just for a few moments to let you know how the church is doing. You know, when we started programming and planning for 2020, and we did that back in 2019, we did not plan for a pandemic, right? You know, although it's caught us off guard, it has not caught God off guard. He knew this was coming down. And the church has actually risen to, uh, to meet the different ministry needs, and I'm so proud of it, right? So let me tell you a few things about how we've risen to, uh, to meet the needs in our community and in our, uh, in our faith community also. One of them is we are adhering to the governor's request, so our doors are closed to the public. But we are looking at all these different platforms to be able to get the message of hope out to you, right? And although our doors are closed, our staff and our pastors, we're still working here, or we're working from home uh, to make sure that we can do things like live stream to you today, right? And so everybody's uh, working tirelessly for you. Now, you might be at home, you're thinking, how can I help, Sharon? I'm, I'm stuck at home, but what can I do, right? Well, I want to give you two ways to be able to help. The first one, and the most important one, is through prayer, right? I want you to be praying. You know, there's so many scriptures that tell us that if the people that are called by God's name, that's you and me, if we will humble ourselves and seek our God and talk to him, right, that he will help us if we, if we come to him in our time of need, that we will partner up with him and that it indeed he will come and not only heal us, but heal our land. And so every morning I get up and my prayer is for not just the United States and not just our Tidewater area, but for our community of the faith. It's for you. And so I want you to come and partner up with me and do that every, every Every day, right? That's the first way through prayer. Second way is through financially supporting us, right? Supporting the ministry, what's going on here. There are many of you that you text a tithe, and I would encourage you to continue to text a tithe, uh, you know, that platform. Also, uh, the ACH that people are doing, those are those automatic withdrawals from your bank, and you're automatically sending it here, and we're processing it. Oh, I love the ACH because it just so helps us to count on that. And then there are many of you that you only give when you were here, or, or perhaps you're wanting to give and you're sitting at home going, how can I help? Well, I tell you what, there's a button right at the top up here, it says give. And all you gotta do is click it and it'll take you over to our webpage on uh, vineyardchurch.com and it will show you how to give online. Super, super easy, right? And so you can participate that way. Listen, in this time, we need you. 
We need you to pray, and we need you to financially support the ministry. Those two things are what we need. And I just want to end by telling you that we care and we love you deeply. And we have all these platforms of emails and, and social media and stuff like that, and Pastor Andy's going to talk about it, right? And so we want you to be able to partner up with us. We care deeply about you, and we love you. Now take a look at this, uh, this bumper before Pastor Andy comes. Well, welcome to all of you who are joining us online. Welcome to Vineyard Church. So glad to have you. It's been a crazy last few weeks as we have been experiencing the challenges of the novel coronavirus. And, uh, you know, one of the things that when we come together as a church, we can be re-envisioned. We can see what God has to say about our lives, the lives of people around us, the world around us. And so that's what we want to do certainly today. The big, we, the big news for us here in Virginia is with Governor Northam, he had that 30-day uh, mandate that said if you're, a, if you're a non-essential store or organization that he wanted you to, uh, to not meet for 30 days. It wasn't a stay-at-home rule like a number of other states, so I'm thankful for that, but certainly that is causing some challenges. He actually put a list out of some non-essential things, gyms and, um, and, and places where you go get your nails done or all those things that you don't need to do. And then he had the core essentials. Hey, we need to eat. Uh, we have certain things we have to have. And I thought it was interesting. Here's, one of the, here's the list. One of them was, uh, this was an essential, beer, wine, and liquor stores. So that's got to be for mental health, right? I, I, I don't think he put that in there for those who are addicted and have to have it physically. So I'm thinking to myself, mental health-wise, why do you need liquor? Well, to not, you know, kill your kids when they're home all the time. Or maybe you're not getting along with your spouse right now, and that's, you know, you're putting them too close together. Or, I don't know, whatever reason he's got the liquor, I guess that's, uh, that's an essential right now. And I was looking at some memes, uh, as probably many of you, and some of the highlights uh, that I thought kind of, you know, struck me was I wanted to show him, share him with you. One is here. It is this guy. He's the Jason mask, right? It says this mask won't protect you from COVID-19, but it will sure help you with social distancing. I thought, well, uh, I think any mask helps you with social distancing, actually. And then uh, here's one. The beast. This is the, uh, uh, the beauty and the beast. The beast says the castle is your quarantine now. You can go anywhere you wish except the West Wing. And Bell says, What's in the West Wing? And he's holding some toilet paper. <laughs> so I thought that was great because of all of the stuff going on. Well, you know, it is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. There's a challenge. I was listening to, uh, as many of you probably, with Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York. And he has that daily briefing, the COVID-19 briefing, where he talks about the challenges of the things within New York, New York City, and, uh, and New York the, the state, and then really by extension, the whole United States, because they're kind of like letting us know what could happen and what we can learn from it. And the way he deals with it is so well. But this past Monday, he was talking, he said, hey, I, and he, here's what he said. I thought it was quite interesting. He said, we all need to figure out how to be socially distanced, but spiritually connected. So he, 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 goes, this is, he goes, we know this, but then he said this, he added this. He said, I know the question, but I don't know the answer. And when he said that, I thought, you know, God's got answers for that. God actually knows not just the question, but the answer. And so what I want to do is, is give you uh, the answer. I want to look at what does God say? How do we stay socially distanced, but spiritually connected to God and to one another? Last week... I talked about 
being socially distanced and disconnected in a healthy way. So if you didn't get a chance to hear that message or watch it, I, would, I encourage you to at vineyardchurch.com. You can go in there, our archived messages right there at the top of the page, and you can, you can uh, look at that or watch that. Today what I want to do, though, is to talk about some really less healthy ways of getting social distancing. There's healthy ways and there's unhealthy ways. And since I already covered the healthy ways last week, I wanted to talk about some of the unhealthy ways. Here's one. The first one is this with scalping. People buy, we all know what that is, right? Back in the day before COVID-19, scalping was like buying some Justin Bieber tickets and then show in advance and then showing up at the concert right before the concert, selling them for double, triple, quadruple the price, right? That's scalping. Uh, I remember when Guitar Hero came out, people had gobbled that up. And then as it got close to Christmas and some kids of, I guess, very affluent families uh, were buying them at exorbitant rates. Some of the, some of the people were selling on eBay uh, this Guitar Hero that cost us like a hundred and Twenty, thirty dollars. They were selling it for five, six, seven thousand dollars, and people were buying it. So that's scalping, you know. But and that's one thing. I say hey, that's a great way to make some money. Uh, there's a lot of people that do the scalping thing, but when you do it, when there's a pandemic, and the effects could be people getting sick, hurt, or even die. Now it's a moral issue. It's no longer just a a clever way to make some money. And and and. Here, here's some of the stuff that you see, like Lysol disinfectant spray, uh, just a bottle of it, seventy, sixty-five dollars, almost seventy dollars, and then uh, you have another one for sixty, and then just some alcohol, twenty-three dollars for a little bottle of alcohol, and, and, and this is just real common. And one of the problems is on Amazon, the third-party dealers, they're doing this it, it all over, and so Amazon's trying to break down on it because obviously break down on them because. There, um, you know, it creates a bad platform experience for people. Uh, the Bible says, don't you think for a moment that you, can't, that you can get away with overcharging others? That's price gouging. That's scalping just to get more for yourself. So it's one thing to do it in normal times when you, it's just a sign of unhealthiness. That's not, that's social distancing at an extreme unhealthy level. And we want to avoid that. Another stealing, obviously stealing is not good. But people try to take advantage of the crisis, the chaos. You have an example of this guy who, uh, this is a, a picture of a guy in, in, in Tucson, Arizona, a couple weeks ago, goes in and uh, steals a bunch of testing kits. Now, he can't actually use those for anything. Maybe he's going to try to sell them, I guess. He disguises himself. That's the image that they have off of the camera. But just, just trying to steal, they ended up catching him. Here's another guy in Portland. He uh, uh, went in and stole these uh, N95 masks. He stole thousands and thousands of them, like 25 containers. That's they, the way they caught him is, is he went ahead and, and tried to sell them on Craigslist. People said, some of the authorities came in and said, yeah, we want to buy them. And then they arrested them, and, 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 but stealing. And then you probably heard about some of the senators that uh, the optics look bad. They'll probably do an investigation uh, I certainly don't know if something went, if they did something wrong, but it looks bad. Certainly, they all had privy information to a special coronavirus briefings that nobody else had. It was it was behind closed doors, and the very next day or two, they're dumping millions of dollars of stocks before the stock market crashes. And so you probably heard about that again. If so, if they're guilty, that's stealing. That's taking advantage of of the crisis. And that certainly would be wrong. They may not be, like I said, I don't know, but uh, it's on the news. The Bible says you already know what is right and what the commandments teach. Jesus is saying, come on, this is bottom shelf stuff. You know this stuff's wrong. He's saying don't, don't commit adultery, don't murder, and don't steal. He goes, you already know this. Don't do that. That certainly would be a sign of, of unhealthy social distancing. Another one is hoarding. And so we all hear stories about that. And of course, the number one thing, maybe surprisingly, people are hoarding, is what? Toilet paper. I mean, of all things, toilet paper. People are just hoarding. This when Sharon and I went to Costco about a week ago, uh, maybe a little more, I guess a week and a half, I don't know. Uh, and we, we grabbed some toilet paper and everybody had toilet paper. I mean, I mean, every single cart, 
all throughout Costco, everybody had at least one of these containers of, of toilet paper. Some people, though, went extreme, hoarding, filling their cart up. You see this cart after cart filled up with toilet paper and paper towels and just way beyond what they need. Of course, what that means is there's a lot of people then don't get it. So that's thinking of yourself. That's really what hoarding is, this idea that there's only so much to go around and I got to look after me uh, because uh, it's, it's, if I don't get it, then, then I'm in trouble. People will curse the businessman with no ethics because there's business people that are taking this as a, as a form of business. Some people are trying to sell it. Uh, Mike Pence was talking about this past week that I guess there was a loophole in the laws that businesses were doing this. They were holding back I-95 or N95 masks and other sub, uh, critical supplies in order to cause uh, a, a supply demand go way up and, uh, and try to make money off of that. And, and he says, hey, that is against the law now. And so that's, he says, hey, there's no ethics in that. But the one with social conscience receives praise from all. And let me just say, there's, that is actually the exception. Those companies that are, that are hoarding like that because you have one company after another, large businesses, small businesses that are donating their time, that are donating masks, donating supplies, shifting things around, trying to help out uh, as we are all pitching in together. That's more of the common thing, but some people do resort to stealing, especially if the opportunity seems to appear in front of them and they take that route. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage, the Bible says, for uh, forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Certainly, that is good advice. Uh, and then I just love this verse. Just don't be greedy, right? It gets pretty simple there. Next is blaming. Blaming when we blame somebody else. And so, you know, we're always looking for somebody to blame. Well, it wouldn't be as bad as it is if we had uh, done it this way with the testing kits or if we prepared better or if so-and-so. It wouldn't have been as bad if uh, we had more ventilators and if somebody had prepared or somebody had done this. And, and, and it's China's fault uh, that we even have it. And it's Italy's fault that people uh, are dying at such a high rate or it's, uh, you know, New York or Washington's fault and we're always it's it's an easy way to blame somebody a lot of times the young people are blaming the older people they're saying hey you kind of brought all this in we don't even have uh the influence to be able to do this you have poor people blaming wealthier people you have people that are going on cruises and getting the virus like happened here in Virginia Beach our first cases here in Virginia Beach some people came back from a cruise. Not that you have to be wealthy to go on a cruise, but uh, that's the way some people are looking. They're blaming. It's, that goes back all the way to the Garden of Eden where they just started blaming, uh, looking for somebody else to blame. And blaming is just another form of complaining. And, and, and just looking for complaining it doesn't really help anything. Live a cheerful life, he says, without complaining or division among yourselves. In other words, you get caught up in complaining which is, includes blaming, it causes division, certainly steals that cheerful life out of your life. Uh, this past week, I was listening to uh, the, uh, the commission, the, the coronavirus commission uh, that our government has, and on there is Tony Fauci. A lot of you are, have seen him on the news, Dr. Tony Fauci. He's one of the leaders of that. And, uh, and they were trying to get some of the journalists who were kind of goading him to who to blame. And I love what he said. He said, he goes, I'm a scientist. As science, scientists, we don't try to find blame. We solve problems. My suggestion is I think that's good for everybody. In fact, that's what the Bible says. I mean, we need to just, hey, let's, let's be into the problem solving, not all about blaming. Blaming, all that does is really become an unhealthy form of social distancing. Then there's insomnia. Insomnia is more internal. It certainly affects the people around us, but when you have just all the things that are going on, people being laid off, maybe you got laid off. Certainly we all know people that their jobs are not there anymore. Their businesses are in trouble. Uh, there are, are people's retirement funds, their 401ks are, 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 are disappearing. And then you hear on the news, they say, well, just stay in your home and try not to think about that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. If, if I say, uh, don't think of pink elephants, just whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant. What's the first thing everybody does? You think of a pink elephant. 
And that's exactly what happens is you have all of this stuff happening. And then in the meeting, they say, oh, well, by the way, you know, stay at home and try not to think about what well, doesn't work like that. It ends up affecting you. It robs you of quietness. It robs you of peace. It can rob you of, uh, of restfulness and of sleep and of sleep. About a week ago, uh, that started happening to me. I found myself waking up uh, stressed out thinking about all the things uh, regarding corona uh, and, and how it's affecting our community, how it's affecting our church. And, and I, was just, I wasn't sleeping well. I mean, I just night after night, I was, I, I was going to bed late, getting up early, waking up all throughout the night. Sometimes just, I, I, I just couldn't sleep. I had insomnia. So in my small group on Thursday, uh, I meet with uh, some guys, and, and right now we're meeting on Zoom. And so I just told them. We kind of were going around talking about uh, different things we could pray for each other. I said, hey, I'm not, I'm not sleeping well at all, just honestly. Uh, I have, you know, I'm struggling with insomnia. And so some of the guys just said, hey, Andy, let's, I want to just pray for you right now. They prayed for me. Then they texted me. A couple of the guys texted me the next day said, hey, how'd you sleep? I slept through the night without waking up, restful like a baby. And really, ever since then, I've just had great sleep. Uh, but I needed other people to pray for me. That's part of the reason that small groups are so important. The Bible says, I can lie down and sleep soundly because you, Lord, will keep me safe. What an awesome verse. But that's one of the things that God wants to do uh, in our lives is give us good sleep. Then there's discouragement. Again, you look around and you just, it just can be so sad. It can cause you to feel like you want to cry. Uh, your, people are missing their graduations they're missing key events. Weddings are having to be either canceled or rescheduled. We have uh, a gal here in our church. She was training for the Olympics and has been for years. She, as a swimmer, she was going to Tokyo. And as you know, the Tokyo Olympics just got canceled this week. And here it is. Now, sure, they're scheduling it you know, for the next year, but it's, a, it's at least a whole year of her life. She's been training, and now she has to extend that training. She wasn't sure she was going to even do it again. She was discouraged. Rightly so. I mean, do all of that hard work. Not all of them can do it again next, in, in a year from now. So you, you struggle with all, all kinds of things. How do I get through this? And, 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 and that can cause distancing. Don't be discouraged, the Bible says. Don't be disturbed, for I know uh, my God will break through for me. So God will break through for us. We've got we to stand on that. It says, friends, when life gets really difficult... Don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. That's sometimes our first jump is this, things aren't going well. Things are really challenging. God, are you doing your job okay? Do you need help from somebody? What's going on here? And he says, hey, don't jump to that. God is in control. As Sharon said earlier, he knew about it. Even though we didn't know about it, he knew about it. And he's going to use all things uh, to work together for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And that includes, that includes you. And then anxiety. Anxiety and worry can just rob us of our peace, cause us to really do things that we wouldn't normally do. We react in a way that's, that's not our best version of ourselves. We're not thriving in our home life. We're not doing well at work. I mean, just, there's kind of just a, a, a darkness about us, a, a stress about us. And we're always on edge. This is anxiety. And this certainly can cause a lot of problems in unhealthy social distancing. When really that's a time when we need each other more than ever. Jesus said this, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. And then he goes on, he says, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality. God initiative and God provisions. You remind yourself, God is my provider. It's whenever things start to look very uh, elusive, like it could just disappear, which it really could. I mean, all of us, all of us, no matter how wealthy you, you and I are, no matter, what, no matter who it is, Jeff Bezos, whoever, all of us are one big crisis away from being bankrupt, from losing it all. It can happen that quick. And I think there's kind of a heightened reality of that when you have this virus that's kind of wreaking havoc across the entire globe. So those are some of the things that would cause us to be unhealthily distanced from each other. Social uh, distancing in an unhealthy way. Well, let me show you real quick what the Bible says, how you and I can stay spiritually connected to God 
and to one another. Very, very important. Very, very important. Let's look at that. Okay, spiritual connection is being a part of a body. That's what God says, that when you put your faith in Christ, that you enter in, you're part of something bigger than just yourself. You're part of the body of Christ. And as part of the body, he says, in Christ's body, we're all connected. So there's something that's connected there to each other. He goes on and says, we are joined together. So this connection happens in his body by his strong sinews. And we grow as we get in nourishment and strength from God. So he says, we're drawing our strength from God, but we're doing it together like a body is, is connected together with its, with its uh, uh, ligaments and, and, and the muscle tissue and the bones. All those things come together. And he says, we're part of that body. We're connected. We need one another. And that's part of the way that we stay connected. In a body, we are all connected together. And so we're, how are you connected when you can't meet, when you can't meet in small groups even? How do we stay connected? Well, certainly we're relying to a certain degree on technology like we are today with our online services, but we have a platform where you can interact and connect with one another there. Certainly we can use the phone. I mean, that's older technology, but it's a, there's nothing like using the phone, either calling them or even texting them, saying, how are you doing? If you're in a small group, you're connected in, like I told you earlier how I am. I'm getting prayer. I'm, I'm able to pray for others. We're able to encourage one another. Uh, that's a way you stay connected. And, and, and we're calling everybody. We're kind of going through the whole directory, trying to call everybody uh, to reach out to them, saying, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Can we pray for you? We're trying to stay connected to you. And uh, I encourage you to call us, especially if you don't get a call in the next week or so. Uh, call us. Maybe our data is wrong. Maybe something went wrong. We, got, we missed that. A lot of what we do here is by volunteers. So don't take it personally. Don't over-spiritualize it. Oh, no, somebody doesn't love me. No, just you reach out and call us. Let us know. But we want to stay connected to you. That's very important. And then spiritual connection is, a, is like being a sheep connected in a flock. And so Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And he says, you are my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. And uh, they, 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 they listen to my voice. They, they recognize my name. And over and over. So there's this metaphor that we're, that we're like sheep. Uh, two weeks ago, we actually had a sheep here. I had this little ram uh, that I had used as an, as an illustration. Uh, because God always is connecting uh, this idea of sheep to who we are and what we do. He says, we are his people, the sheep of his pastor. He says, you're like that. He goes, take care of God's flock. And he's talking about the leadership. Take care of his people that you are responsible for. And so in, you know, what happens in, when you're in a flock and you have a shepherd, then you're, there's protection and there's care. That's what happens. Is you get provided for and you get cared for. Notice it says that he's talking to the leadership uh, and, and, and in a flock, the sheep are protected and cared for. That's what happens here at Vineyard. Now we do have a leadership. We, God, he sets it up. We see that in Exodus 18. We see it in Acts all throughout the Bible. We see this idea of, of, of making sure there's people caring for one another. And so in our church, we have those who have gone through growth track. What they're saying is, is I want to be part of this church. I want to grow and understand my gifts and how God wired me. I want to discover that. I want to, and I want to do it in this church. And so we have our, when you go through growth track, you're a, what we call a dream team, or you're part of the dream that everybody's got a God-given dream in them, and, you're, and we're coming together, putting our dreams together, and we're doing, it, we're doing it as servants to the Lord together. So we call it our dream team. But then... We have some that are dream team leaders. And some of you, you're watching this, you're, you are a dream team leader. And we ask you to stay in contact with them. Now, if you're in a small group, that happens in your small group. If it's a weekend service or something like that you're serving, you usually just get in contact with them right there. You'll meet with them in Dream Team Central. And you'll have a huddle there. But staying connected is so vital. Well, that's not happening right now, right? So we're not meeting. So we've asked all of our dream team leaders to call their people, which is usually only, I don't know, three to ten people. It's usually not that much. Call them every week. We, we're asking you, if you're a dream team leader and you're not calling your people weekly or at least texting them and getting a reply, hey, how is it going? Uh, then those people are not being cared for. We just read that, Bi that Bible verse. And we're saying we need to do that. That's part of what God wants us to do because he wants us not only to stay connected, 
but protected. And we talk about protection as praying for somebody. So how can you pray for them if you don't know what they're going through? You go, yeah, well, I just talked to them two weeks ago. Hey, in this day and age, what's going on? Things can change rapidly, rapidly. What was happening in their life just two or three or four weeks ago? And you know that's even true of yourself. Maybe totally different today. So we want to stay in contact with our people, praying for them. And if you're a dream team leader, of course, you have coaches that are calling you and texting you every week. And, uh, and I ask you, if you're a coach and you're watching this, Please be calling your dream team leaders every week during this time. More than ever, we need you to do that. It's very, very vital. And then, uh, so you have a part of the body is how we stay connected. And then a sheep and a flock is how we're protected. And then a member in a family is how we grow. Because that's how we grow in a family. Every person is born into a family. We need a family to grow. And when we're Born, into, born again, when we're born into God's family, we're part of his family. God's family is the church. That is, and then I love this. He says, no prolonged infancies among us, please. Because everyone begins as an infant, right? And they go from infant, they go to a baby. Baby to a toddler. Toddler to a kid. Kid to a teen. Teen to a young adult. Young adult to a mature person. There's a process that grows into our spiritual development. And it happens In a family, it happens in God's family. He says, God wants us to grow. He wants you to grow, to grow up, to know the whole truth and to tell it in love. So that's God's plan for us. In a family, the members grow together. So you hear all the time here at Vineyard that the way we stay spiritually connected is connect, protect, grow. Connect, protect, grow. We say it all the time. That's where we get it from, those, those, those verses, because God says that's what the church is supposed to be. This is when we pull together. This is when we need each other. Okay, I'm going to just take a moment. Let's pray. You know, right where you're at, wherever you're at, uh, just take a moment. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes, do that. If you want to keep your eyes open, uh, certainly that's fine. But let's take a moment, seal this before God. Okay, Father, I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you give peace. You give your provision. You, 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 you help us, Lord, as we are in a society that is doing a number of these unhealthy ways of coping where they're either stealing or they're scalping and price gouging or they're hoarding or they're blaming other people, all these kinds of things. Lord, I just pray that you help us to not get swept up into that, to remember that you're our provider. You give us provision and we want to rest in that. And part of that rest includes not having insomnia, not having all kinds of of turmoil in our heart and in our minds when we try to dial down, whether it's in sleep or maybe just dial down when we get home and we're with our families or if we're at home with our families all day long or whatever our circumstances are. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling with discouragement. They they, they look around them and and, uh, they just have a hard time kind of hanging on to anything that gives them hope. And, and God, you are the hope expert. You come in and you pour hope into us. Lord, I pray that we would not only get hope for ourselves, but have enough to be able to give to others. That we would show up wherever we're at, whether it's uh, the limited interactions we have with people on the phone or on uh, some kind of online experience or whether we're in the grocery store or whether we're going to work or whatever we're doing. Lord, I just pray that you would give us that sense of peace and help us to not have anxious thoughts and worry. Lord, I pray specifically for those who are in the, uh, the, the, the health care area and those areas where they're having to serve the community. They don't have the opportunity and the privilege to stay distant. And the, in a way, they're, they're, in a very real way, they're in harm's way. And so, Lord, we just pray for your protection upon them. You, you, you watch over them and and keep them from harm. Keep this plague, this virus away. And Lord, I pray for all of our homes, Lord. Let us be just spared that plague. Help us to stay safe. Help us to to, to be in that place where we trust in you. And Lord, I pray for those who don't feel spiritually connected. Maybe that's you where you're feeling, hey, I'm not connected. I don't feel like I'm very protected or cared for. I don't feel like I'm in a place where I can grow spiritually. God's best is that you have those things. And so it all begins, though, by coming to Christ and saying, God, I I need that directly from you because the church will never be perfect. It's filled with imperfect people. 
It's still the body of Christ. It's still the flock of God. It's still the family of God. And yet it's filled with imperfect people. And so, Lord, help us to to recognize, really, you're our ultimate source. And so go to God right now, would you? Just say, God, right now, by your mercy, by your power, fill my heart. If you've never put your faith in Christ, or maybe you're just, you're saying, hey, I need that. I need that assurance right here, right now, that I'm close to God, that God's got me in the palm of his hand, that I don't have to worry about the plague that comes by day or by night. Would you say, God, today, right now, just you, you can close your eyes or, or, or whisper it, whatever, just right where you're at, whatever you feel comfortable, say, God, forgive me of my sin. I want to come home to you. Would you say that? Say, God, I want to come home to you. I want that provision. Would you say, Holy Spirit, come in my heart. Fill me up. Give me that assurance, Lord, that I'll be with you and that you're with me now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you prayed with me, let me know about it. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little place where you can sit. You can, it says, I need prayer. Another one says, I, I raised my hand. I prayed with you. That's what it's saying. I prayed with you. And click on that so we can pray for you. We have people, prayer counselors right there uh, with you in the service. They want to pray for you. And uh, I encourage you to do that. Let me just also say that uh, this is an opportunity uh, where we always take our offering at this, at this moment in our services. And if you're part of our church, I invite you. Would you come and support us? Uh, this is an, a, is an important time. I mean, Sharon mentioned earlier when we started this, this budget, we didn't have a COVID-19 line item. We have one now, and we're doing some amazing things. We have been a generous church. We've been a generous church. I mean, this is just an opportunity for us to even have more generosity. Just this past week, we had, uh, this past Saturday, we had 98 people come for food. We had uh, one lady, she came, she took a taxi from Willoughby Spit and uh, with her kids, she had six kids, and she just come for a couple of some bags of groceries. And so one of our people went out and asked the taxi cab driver, hey, how much did, are you going to charge her? He goes, it's 20 bucks. So we went ahead and paid that and gave her groceries for all of her, for her and her kids. We had another guy come. He's a businessman and his mother is living with him. She's dying and he lost his business. So he, he goes, I've never been in this situation. I've never needed food. Very humbling. He comes to our, our church and we're able to give him and resource him and his mother with some food. We had another leader in our church. Both her and her husband lost their jobs and so they're in a difficult place. We're able to help them and resource them with some money, with some, some food. And we're doing this over and over. And people that are coming, they're getting prayed for. Only one person said, no, thank you. I don't want prayer. But we're not only helping them, practically we're helping them and in, in, in reaching into their heart and giving them hope and praying for them. It's just a great, a great opportunity. And, and, and with Vineyard, here, when you give, I want you to know that we're not, we're not like ready to go out of business. I mean, we didn't know this was coming, but we, we live with a very, very uh, frugal mindset as far as how we're dealing with the money that you guys give. We want to make sure every dollar is spent well, is accounted for well. We're debt free. Uh, a lot of churches aren't. We're glad to be debt free, certainly in a time like this. It's nice to know. We, so we're not, we're not ready to go out of business or anything like that, but certainly when you are generous, we're able to be even more generous as a church. So we invite you, would you give? We've given you a couple of ways. One is, is the easiest is through text tithing. Just, you just give through text. Real simple with that uh, 45777. And then when that comes up, you just type in VCC uh, space and then whatever amount. Very simple. And then we have some other ways, of course, that you can give just old fashioned check, of course, either online banking like Sharon and I do, or just write a check and send it in. And then, uh, and then you can go to our website, vineyardchurch.com. And there's some ways to give there as well. So we try to make it very easy, but would you uh, give uh, and support what we're doing? The, the church is coming together. We're having opportunities we've never had before. And I'm so excited about it. And uh, so I just want to encourage you, uh, be blessed, stay close to God, and reach out to somebody uh, that uh, can encourage you in your faith uh, this week, okay? God bless. 
I hope you enjoyed the Vineyard Church stream. We were so excited and honored to have you a part of it. But hey, if God was moving on your life, we want to hear about it. We want to know. So please don't just go back to the routine of your week. Let us, let us know. Send us a message. Send us an email. Give us a call. If there's any way we can support you in this time too, we are here for you. Whether that's our food pantry or just prayer needs or small group needs, we have gotten creative in our way of, of, of staying connected as a family. So don't back down, but again, press in. Also, if you'd like to give, you can do that as well on our website. But hey, we'll see you next week. We'll be back for another stream and we're excited for what God is going to do.